Welcome back to Run With Rifles Beta 0.77. This is Comjack here, and this is the gameplay tutorial of my tutorials. So, I will be doing this tutorial in a few sections. Um, you can find the little time slots down below in the description. So let's get started. If you've watched my other video, you know what's going on. I'm going to just hit start new game, green, even. Let's start at 4 so I can show you some AI commands. Yeah, accuracy, I'll leave it at default, and max order will pump it up to 200. Vehicles will leave it on. Let's get started. So right now, you are smack middle in the war. You may not have the war right next to you, but you're there. Ha Let's start with the basics. We're going to do movement right now. Movement, simple, WSAD. You can move all around, do whatever you like with WSAD. Movement's very fluid, nothing wrong with it pretty simple to understand. What the most important part about movement is, is the prone and crouch positions. To you'll go prone, hit your prone button. Um, for me, it's shift. For you, it will be something else, so check it in your options menu. And boom, there you go, going prone. Now, the benefit of going prone is obviously you're harder to hit. You also have much higher accuracy, as denoted by the size of the cursor. As you notice when I stand up, lay down, the cursor size changes. More accurate fire. Good. However, when you're prone, you crawl literally at a snail's pace. Look at that. Compared to walking around, running around, you are a lot slower. Another thing that's worth mentioning. When you're walking in one direction, you can snapshot right behind you not a big deal. However, when you're prone, watch what happens. If I'm facing to the right, shooting to the right, and I notice something behind me, if I want to shoot behind me, look at my guy. He has to turn all the way around before he can get a shot off. That is a huge limitation of the prone position. You're going to want to be careful when you're getting flanked and you're lying down. Notice that I cannot shoot at about uh, 90 degrees, so you gotta wait for your guy to line up the sights before you can start shooting. Huge disadvantage, but once again, best cover and best accuracy. Crouched for me is the right mouse button, you hit it, and there you go, crouch. It's a little slower, but you still move at a reasonable pace. You get behind cover, use crouch. You can shoot, you can snap shoot without needing to turn around like in prone position and that all works out fine and dandy. Crouch is generally used when you're behind waist-high walls, sort of like this one right here. Notice that my head is not actually quite covered by the cover. Someone could shoot me from over here, for instance, and if I don't want to be shot, you crouch. From this position, I'm in much better protected, and if I start shooting out, my character will automatically jump out of cover, stand up, and take the shots. This game is very much a cover based game and the gameplay revolves around position and overall tactics when it comes to outmaneuvering your opponents. Crouching, prone, very important. Um, when you, if you notice when I was going prone, if I was at any walking pace or running pace, going prone results in a dive. This was a newly implemented feature doesn't quite help out as much as you might expect, but it does add to the fluidity of the game and it kind of makes sense because before you could just drop to a standstill and go prone when you were running at full speed. That obviously is not realistic, so we added in this dive. Diving is kind of useful when there's grenades being thrown about and you gory when you get ambushed and you need to get behind cover real quickly. You just hit the dive button, get behind cover, and crawl away to safety. That is it for part one. This is movement. Next up will be shooting. Welcome to the shooting section of the tutorial. Here I'll mostly be going over the cursor and some of the grenade throwing and law shooting. So what's going on with the cursor? There are clearly two little cursors, one that's larger, one that's tiny. The larger one, I control. 
that is where I want my character to generally shoot in. So what is the little one? The little one is the line of sight indicator. It tells you what the path from your character to your cursor. And if there's anything in between in 3D, for instance this car, it will tell you, hey, your view is blocked, you're not going to get a shot off to where I'm actually pointing. Note that the large cursor is red to indicate that you do not have line of sight in that direction. If you have a clear line of sight, the little cursor will go straight to the large cursor and that denotes that you have a clear shot at whatever you're trying to shoot at. This is hugely important when you're talking about finding cover or trying to get a better shot on your opponents than they can on you. This mostly has to do with the terrain and if you noticed the ISO lines that I was talking about in my other tutorial they show up a little more obviously here. The white lines denote terrain above you and the black lines denote terrain below you. For instance, right here is a hill. You wouldn't necessarily be able to tell if this was a top-down game, but because of these ISO lines, you can clearly tell there's a hill there and there's a valley that results in a river. So note as I walk across, these ISO lines update automatically to show which terrain is above and which terrain is below me. So grenades for me are G. You're going to want to check your controls again, make sure you know which button they are. Right now, I don't have grenades. How do you get grenades? How do you get other weapons? Use the knife button. You can also pick them up off def dead people, but in the case that you don't have any dead people around, you're going to want to use the knife. For me, it's middle mouse button. You're going to want to check out what your button is. There it is. That's the knife. You use this against people. You can kill people with it, obviously. It's a knife or you can open crates. Crates lie around the map. All you do is you walk up to it, slice it right open, boom, grenades, maybe a weapon. There's a Mossberg. I'm not going to pick that up right now. I'll talk about that in the next section. Grenades will fly as far as they can towards your cursor. Note that if I put my cursor on this cover right here, he will try and chuck it there. But if I throw it near me, he will drop the grenade, essentially. You're going to need to learn how to use the grenades in the three dimensions because they do interact with everything around them. For instance, if I wanted to get a grenade up to the top of the building, if I was standing here, you'd expect your character to just chuck it up there as hard as he can, but watch what happens. It bounces right off the wall and almost kills me you're going to have to learn where to stand to get grenades where you want them. For instance, that's not even close enough. Not far enough, I'm sorry. So, obviously it takes a lot of practice, some practice that I probably don't quite have yet. Eventually, you're going to be able to put grenades pretty much wherever you want on the map. It may take some creative thinking, such as bouncing them off building walls, but eventually you'll be able to use them against people everywhere. There you go, right on top of the building. It's very hard to do. Well, not very hard, but you need practice with it before you can do it well. So there you go, you've got general shooting done with the left mouse button. For me, grenades are the middle, sorry, grenades are G, and knifing is the middle mouse button. Not knife crates, get weapons, get grenades, um, get rockets, but the uh, the cost of knifing all your crates is that you lack cover. Crates are perfect waist-high cover, as you can see, set up behind it. So you're going to need to kind of calculate the trade-off between knifing all your crates and actually just using them for cover. That is all for this section. The next section I will go through every weapon available in the game, hopefully and give you an idea of what weapons fit what roles. Thank you for watching for now. Welcome to the weapons section of the tutorial. Here I'll be going through every single weapon in the game, kind of talking about the differences that make them worth using. So we've got a series of weapons right now. More may come later. First up we have the MP5, silenced the AK-47, the G-36, your two assault rifles, the PKM and the M-240 as your light machine guns, 
the Mossberg 500 being your shotgun and your M24A2 sniper rifle. Along with that, you have some explosive ordnance, including the M72 Law, which is a shoulder-mounted rocket launcher, and you have grenades. So I'll start with the silenced. Note that in the background, I'm just going to be running around grabbing all the weapons, showing them off. But I will be talking about each weapon individually right now. So the MP5 silenced is a silenced weapon. It obviously decreases the chance of AI hearing you. However, this does not work on human players. Why? Because in this isometric view, they can see you just as well as you can see them. So only use the MP5 SD if you're going solo against a bunch of AI and you don't want to get caught. The silenced weapon also works very nicely at night where the AI's visibility of you decreases. The G36 and AK-47 are the two standard assault rifles. They behave pretty similarly. They have differences. I'm going to let you play around with them and find out whether or not y'all can tell. They're actually quite hard to distinguish, but they are slightly different. Most people don't have too strong of a preference in one direction or another. And those are your stock most common weapons. Next up is the PKM and M240. And those are your light machine guns, squad support weapons. Right now I'm actually holding an M240 and I can demonstrate the thing that it does. Obviously it has a huge magazine capacity, 100. And it puts down bullets fast. You don't need to reload as much, but when you do, reloading does take quite a while, as you're noticing right now, compared to the other weapons. So, what's going on with the M240? The M240 requires that your character be prone when shooting. If I try to shoot while standing right now, he will automatically drop into a prone position before shooting. I cannot crouch and shoot, he will also drop to a prone position. So make note of that when you're using the M240, you must be prone unless you are behind waist high cover, such as this fence. Using the fence to support your weapon, you can now actually shoot from a standing position. However, you, once again, you must find waist high cover to support your weapon on, such as crates, fences, low walls, hedges, anything like that, even cars. Okay, I'll show right here. Yep. Hold on. There you go. Supported. Get some bullets down range without having to go prone. The PKM is almost identical. It has 80 bullets per magazine and it will force you to be in either the crouch or the prone position before you can start shooting. So it does give you more mobility than the M240, but it's slightly weaker and a lot faster actually. So it's all relatively well balanced in the end. The Mossberg 500 is your run-of-the-mill pump-action shotgun. It holds eight rounds or shells, and the special thing about the Mossberg is that it reloads shell by shell. You cannot hit R and reload all weapon, all rounds at the same time. Just like in many other games, you hold down R to continue the reload until you want to stop. You can interrupt your reload at any time by shooting or letting go of R, and you can also um, just reload one round at a time to get a lot of shells downrange. The M24A2 is your sniper rifle. This is a bolt action sniper. It's very accurate at long range and it kills immediately. It is a 100% kill chance. So, very powerful, very slow to shoot, very slow to reload, and you're going to want to be careful by using it. It does grant the scope bonus. What is the scope bonus? Well, let me demonstrate with another weapon real quick. 
when I'm using an AK or any other weapon, if I drag my cursor to the edge of the screen, the screen moves. I get an enhanced field of view in that direction. However, this is limited. When using the M24A2, if I can find one, I'll show it to you, your field of view in any direction is increased. In fact, there's one right here, so I'll try and blow him up. Oh, killed myself too. Bugger. The M24 gives you the scope bonus, which increases your field of view in any direction. This only activates when you are stationary. So you must be stationary to see the field of view increase. This lets you get the first shot off on enemies because you can see them while they cannot see you. It also allows you to spot enemy movement and the like, what you would expect from your typical sniper. Pretty powerful weapon. It's 10 shots in a magazine and it's slow reload speed, slow firing speed, kind of limited in close quarters and medium range as you would expect. Finally, there is the law in the grenade, your explosive ordnance. The law is a shoulder mounted rocket launcher. You need to be above rank zero. You cannot be rank zero to use the law. You must be rank one or higher to carry laws. So if you're wondering why you can't pick up the law like the one right in front of me that I just picked up, you are going to want to check your rank to see how many you can carry. You equipped the law using your switch to secondary button. For me, that is X. Once again, you're going to want to check what yours is. Just hit the button. Soldier will pull out the M72. And you click and something goes boom. Like that truck. Truck's armored, so it takes a couple of shots. Whoa. Okay, it takes a few more shots. But it's your first line of defense against most vehicles, including Jeeps, especially. The M72 is not 100% accurate. You're going to want to account for some cone of fire when you shoot it because it tends to drift off in random directions. So don't use it in crowded areas. They do have friendly fire on, so you can, in fact, kill your own people. Grenades I've discussed before, you hit G for me, your grenades button, you pop grenades, lob them, learn how to use them, very useful in-game. There you go, truck is down. Grenades are mostly anti-personnel, they can take out a jeep very well, less so against trucks and APCs, you're going to want to resort to a law from the sides or many, 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 many grenades. That pretty much sums up everything in the weapons section. Next up will be kills and the ranking system. Stay tuned. Welcome to the next section of the tutorial here. I will be talking about kills, rank, and squad mates. So if you notice right there, I got negative 9 points. What does that mean? If you notice under my name, I have a number, 4,054. This corresponds to my rank. Every 1,000 points is a rank up. Right now, I'm on the fourth rank as Staff Sergeant First Class with 4,054 points. You gain points by killing enemies, either by running them over using explosives, shooting them, knifing them, whatever you like. You get more points if you knife them. It's just a little incentive to try it out. It's a lot of fun. So let me get some kills here, hopefully, to show you the score indicator. Once again, if you watch my menu tutorial, you will know that you can turn all these off. Look at that, plus 18, plus 20. Now my score should be increased to 4,092. So what benefits does being a higher rank give you? The biggest improvement that you get when you rank up is being able to control more squad mates. Along with that, you get to carry more grenades and more laws. 
um, squad mates will join your squad on their own account. Notice the fraction in the bottom right hand corner, two out of four. This indicates that I have four slots open for squad mates. That's based on my rank. I'm a staff sergeant first class, I have four. When I get promoted, I'll have five that I can command. Right now it's one out of four. That means I have one squad mate right here, Brandon Richardson, who follows me around and does my evil biddings. I could have four. You're going to need to find people to join your squad. They do so on their own. There's nothing you can do. They will join randomly and holy smokes, that's a rotating truck. The developer's gonna have to take a look at that. Anyways, so he's my squad mate. He loyally follows me around. A quick note, only people of a lower rank will join you. For instance, this man is a sergeant. I am a staff sergeant first class. Obviously, I'm more stripes, therefore I am better than him. They sometimes will not join you. That's their own business. Let's see if I can get some more squad mates. Now, the squad mates comes with a squad command. You're going to look it up in your menu. Mine is Alt. Use Alt to command your squad. Alt. There you go. Oh, I just got run over. Let me try that again. So yes, you use Alt to command your squad. Alt on anywhere that's not you is a command to go there. Your squad will move to that position, take cover, and fight their way there, or hold the position. Okay, I have a squad mate now. As you saw from my fraction, he's right over there, he's a little bit stuck. Let's pull this truck out of here. Talk about vehicles later. Yes, there's my squad mate. Come on. Come on. There he is. So as you can see, I'm using alt on positions. They will follow it. They will go there. They can go on top of buildings. And you can do something. There we go. Let's get on top of the building. On top of the building. You might need to work them a little bit. There you go, you're going on top of the building. So that's the alt button. If you alt on yourself, the squad will regroup on you and continue following. It's a very simple system, you can use them to flank. For instance, if I wanted to charge up this road, and I wanted my squad to move up there, note that we're still one squad working together. Lastly, squad mates can drive you around or man the unmanned positions in a vehicle that you are in. I will not talk about this right now. I will talk about that later when it comes to vehicles themselves. So you're going to have to wait a little bit on that. But that is the essence of rank. Every thousand points, you go up a rank, you get one more squatty you can control. You can carry more grenades up to four and you can carry more laws. And that is pretty much it for rank and AI. Squad mates, stay tuned for the map and objectives. Right, now I am going to talk about the map. The map you bring up with the map view button, for me it's tab, hit it, there it is, sexy little map. What's going on on this map? First off, we got the obvious names. West Town, North End, Midtown, East Bridge, East Suburb, West Suburb, South Side, and Factory. What do those mean? Those are the bases. To win, you capture all the bases. If you're green, you fill the map with green. If you're gray, you fill the map with gray. Game over. So how do you capture each of these bases? If you notice, on each base, there's a little Docker Square. West Town is right there at the 8. North End is there. East, Bay, East Bridge, Suburb, Suburb, South Side, and the Factory. To win, you to capture a base actually, you have to have more troops in that square than the other team. 
it's actually a certain percent it's about 66 i believe you have to have 66 percent more troops than the defending team and a timer will start to count down how do you know how many troops you have per grid if you notice in the bottom middle sort of there's this bar this bar indicates the proportion of troops in this given square you are standing in so right now I'm in green controlled north end so it's 100% green right here if I were to go into a gray occupied territory you would see the bar switch over to 100% gray or a certain fraction depending on how many grays there are compared to greens watch watch carefully there you go you switch back and forth between the grids you are standing in gray green of course you can have different little um, different proportions depending on how many people are there you need 66 percent or more in the middle of the base and the dark square of the base to capture it so you go around you capture how do you know what's going on first off the numbers in the grids refer to the number of AI troops, AI friendly troops in the grid. For instance, in West Town's main base, there are six friendly troops right now. That's fine, they're defending it. This will update in real time and will give you information. Now, if you see these numbers with 1 2 or 8 6, 6 6, those mean that enemies were spotted and it gives you the count of allies to enemies. So right now it's 3-8, that means there are three friendlies in that grid and eight enemies. Not a good situation for us. Might wanna head down there to help out. When you also see this exclamation mark, that indicates that enemies were spotted. So 1-3, that means there's three enemies, one friendly. 1-7, like I said, one friendly, seven enemies. What is this big crosshair in the middle of this map? That is the current objective as given by the commander. The commander is an AI unit. You do not, he just watches over the game and he gives orders. So right now we are supposed to approach Midtown via North End. Follow the blue arrows and that is where you'll find most of the fighting going on. So where are we right now? look at the color under your feet mine is a little yellowish green look on the map for the little soldier icon that's yellowish green there he is he's moving with me that's where I am right now the map is oriented the same way as the view so up is up down is down left is left and right is right very easy to navigate you can make your way around very easily the three vehicles each have their own icons you only see icons for vehicles that are yours for instance this truck is ours as denoted by the green name this APC is the enemies because it's gray I only see a truck on the map because that's all that's on our team the APC is here but we cannot see it you can get in it but you can't see it on the map. so there's the truck icon there's a Jeep icon and behind the Jeep icons there are APC icons that are a little bit obscure from view right now, but they're fairly obvious as to what they are. So what happens when you see an explosion on a base? Let's say West Town has an explosion there, a little, little graphic explosion. That means that base is under an attack and may or may not fall. That basically says, go here and defend it. I don't think you'll see one here. I may have to wait for later to show you that. But as of right now, there is no attacking base. So there it is. Actually, right there. See that explosion? That means North End is under attack. If I head there, notice that they have 10 soldiers there. We have two. They just captured it. Now we have to attack North End through West Town, as you can see from our commands. Very straightforward, just follow the map, find the action, and go nuts. Lastly on the map are spawns. These little yellow dots that you can barely see are spawns. When you die, in fact I shall go die, 
on my own grenade. It says, press space to continue. If you press space right now, you will spawn at the closest spawn, which is right there, to where you died. So if I hit space, there I am, right where I predicted. But let's say I don't want to spawn on this one, I want to spawn on that one, or anywhere else on the map controlled by you. Let's do a little hero dive. There you go. Let's say I want to spawn further back. Let's say there's an attack from the factory coming up this way. I need to spawn there, get there fast. You click it, and you'll spawn there. This is all within map view. Pretty nifty stuff. This was a newly implemented feature, and it's quite a game changer to get around. Right now, our last base is under an attack. If you heard those beepings, that means the base that you are near is about to be captured. So you want to rush over there and sort out the problem. Note that I can still do things while in that view. The map does kind of obscure your view, so you're going to need to be careful and just tab in, tab out of it whenever you run into action. I like it, very realistic, because when you're looking at a map, you're looking at a map and not at what you're doing. Note that there is no mini-map, so the tab map is all you have. And right now we are on the defense of the last base. Let's do some little fighting to show you a little more action. Now note I'm not the best player here. Far. So if I do something extremely stupid, forgive me. I'm just your average gamer, not a pro. So we've secured it. There's still three guys in West Town. Uh, we seem to have the number here. Ooh, uh, okay. Well, that was embarrassing. Oh, let's pretend that didn't happen. Still under attack. And this is generally how the flow of the game works. You go from zone to zone. And the beauty about this game is using the map, you can go anywhere. If I wanted to attack Factory right now, I could do that. I could walk right over there and hopefully attack factory successfully. That, plus the coordination from friendly units, makes this game way, way fun. Let's shoot a rocket, there you go. So the map is fairly easy to, uh, to read. I mean, it's not a lot really going on. The only thing you want to remember is that you can spawn wherever you want. That is a yellow dot. Not the white dots, these are not spawned, the yellow dots. And that you need to use your map to find the action, figure out where the enemies are, and go there. Oh my gosh, I've got knifed again. That's bloody awesome. So yeah, I think that is it for the maps. Next up, we have vehicles. That will be the last section. And so, stay tuned. Hello, welcome to the vehicle section of Running With Rifles. As of right now, we have three vehicles, the Jeep, the truck, and the APC. Right now, this Jeep in front of me is bugging out. That's kind of hilarious. That guy can carve a donut like a pro. I should want to hop on. Anyways, as you can see, the Jeep holds four people, driver and three passengers. The Jeep is unique in that it allows the three passengers in the back and the passenger seat to shoot while someone is driving. It's also the fastest vehicle and but also the most fragile. And you can do that. The truck is a mobile spawn point. That is the purpose of it. You notice on my map this truck here has a yellow diamond in it. What that denotes is, as of right now, that truck is a liable spawn point. You can spawn there. For instance, if I died, I could open up my map and click on the truck. And I will spawn on the truck. To get into vehicles, you use the mount 
your vault button, which is for me is space again, and you drive it WSAD, very simple to drive. There it is. Vehicles do go faster on roads as opposed to off road. And they have a little skidding factor, makes them very fun to drive. So this here is the truck. The truck only acts as a spawn point when it is safe. And by safe, I mean not with an enemy within a certain uh, distance, usually about to that building maybe. If there's an enemy too close, the truck will not work as a spawn and you cannot use it. You can also steal vehicles and um, you can steal them by looking at which designation they are. So this truck is green, as denoted by the name. It's a green truck. If I were to find a gray truck lying around, or a gray jeep lying around, I could grab onto it and drive it away. Steal their vehicles. Okay, so that is also hilarious. Remember, this game is really in beta. Don't judge it too much. It's a lot of fun to do that. So let's see, right now I'm in enemy territory, or heading to enemy territory. Well, let's say I assault the factory. So you drive a tr uh, spawn truck up, say right here. You want to engage the handbrake, which is pick up. Whatever button you have for pick up, mine is E. That handbrake prevents AI from stealing your truck. Simple as that. So right now that is hand handbraked, an AI will not walk in there and drive it away, leaving me without a spawn. So I'm assaulting factory, and let's say I die via random grenade. Oh no! Well, let's spawn right on the truck again, and there you go. Mobile spawn point, crucial game changer. You want to use it to go through back doors, assault bases that are unprotected, such as factory. Well, not factory, but such as this one. That is not the main um, objective. And you can lead a silent stealthy assault this way. So that is what the truck does. Trucks can withstand a few grenades, a few law hits. Generally pretty durable. Can run over people. Can run over grenades. I mean, sorry. Can run over crates. And like I said, run over people, which all vehicles can do, so be very careful about driving around at top speed through very crowded areas. And if you want to get back in the truck and drive it away, you'll notice you can't because the handbrakes are on. Fix that, simply hit the pickup button again, E for me, and you're good to go. Drive it away, and you are out of there. The last uh, vehicle is the APC. It is basically a mobile turret. That is exactly what it is, in fact. It has two positions, including a driving position and a gunning position. The driving position you enter from the left, and the gunner you enter from the right. The gunning position is what it sounds like, a gun, driving is driving. It's a little faster than the truck, a little more mobile to dodge uh, rockets and it's generally used offensively. I've seen it used defensively a couple times before, but that's what it is. Um, for the truck and the APC, you can also hop in the back. That's if you're leading a huge squad and you don't want to lose them. They, If you hop in, they will hop in the back with you. It's fairly useful to get massive amount of troops from place to place. You will actually see the enemy AI use this on you quite a bit. That will drive a truck up to the front lines and out will pop about 8 to 10 soldiers. A little bit intimidating when they all jump out at the same time and start mowing your people down. Lastly to mention um, is the AI driving. Like I mentioned before, when you have a squad, which I don't right now, silly me, you can hop in a vehicle and they will hop in as well to fill the vacant seats. Let's say I hop in the driving seat. They will hop in the passenger seat and that'll be that. I will drive them and if I'm in an APC, they will actually hop in the gunning seat and gun for me. So I only have to take control of the driving. However, if you jump into a seat that is not the driver's seat, 
then you can command your AI, your squad, to drive you places. For instance, if I had a squad, they would be in the driver's seat right now. I could use the squad command button, for me it's alt, once again, and they will drive you there. It's essentially a taxi service. So, you hit alt, and they will go there as denoted by the little ring by my cursor right there so I can tell them to drive there and they'll slowly make their way over there they're not the best of drivers yet this is also a beta game what you can also do when you have an AI squad mate driving you is you can open up the map and hit alt on the map so if I want if I were in the this APC let's say I was gunning or let's say I was dead Notice that that truck says stolen. That means that was a gray truck, as you can see by the name. And we stole it. Let's say we were in here. And then when the AI was driving me. I could alt click. Well, not alt click. Just hit alt somewhere on the map. And they would drive you there. They would drive as close to that point as possible. And it would be a taxi. I'll show you this real soon. Hold on for a second. Alright, apologies for that. Uh, let's take a look at the AI driving. This is me driving my squad around. Note that I can only four, fit four people, so the other two are walking. Now let's get out. Let's hop in the passenger seat. Note that my squad, one of my squad mates takes the driver's seat. Well, like I said, you can use Alt, command them to go somewhere driver take us there and he does fairly well you can drive him around oh no i want to go this way look at that using alt fairly decent driving can be a little bit weird sometimes not the best object um detection and avoidance but hell look at that pretty nifty like that so let's see if, let's pretend i want to go to the factory you open up the map, you hit Alt on the factory, wherever you want to go, like right there, and boom, we're off. Right now we're up there, if you haven't noticed. You'll follow the roads the best you can, get off-road as soon as he needs to, and get to that position. Let's watch. So while I'm in this passenger seat, obviously I can shoot. I don't have 360 shooting because there's someone sitting next to me, but I have a good general arc around me. And we're here. This is the factory. The AI will hop on, hop off with you, and right now we're a something factory. Simple as that, use the squad command to move your vehicle when you are not the driver. It's actually quite a bit of fun when you are the gunner on an APC and your squad is driving you. I just totally destroyed this. Note the timer counting down because we have more than 66% of the units on the field in this block and now factory is ours very fun very interesting well, let's do some more just to show off let's go to east bridge take us there and off we go so shooting in the cars very simple you can reload in the cars pretty much exactly as you'd expect drivers cannot shoot however and if we run into some enemies, you'll see a little bit of fighting. Notice that he's trying to follow the roads because you do go fast on the roads. There you go. Shoot it all oh, he just ran over. Yeah, they tend to run people over, so <laughs> if you get run over, you'll not be too worried. This is a hell of a fight and all got killed. But anyway, this is a good time to stop right now. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please comment. If you have any suggestions, also comment. Don't forget to check us out on the forums and the IRC chat. We are there, we are friendly, and we will be waiting. Thank you for watching. This is Comjack here. Have a good night.